Hey guys, so in this video we're just going to be looking at the perfect competition in the long run. So I just want you to recap over short run and long run when we look at the costs of productions. So the short run is the period of time in which one factor production will be fixed and maybe the rest of them will be variable. And so if we are looking at the short run in relation to a bakery, their premises may be fixed. So the fact that they might just set up one bakery. So that's their land. But labour will be maybe variable so they might take on two three four staff capital so how much money is invested in the business that's going to be variable so as we move to the long run we know that all factors become variable so when we look at the bakery again they may decide to open up two or three different bakeries and as a result the factor production of land has now become variable okay so just remember that when we're talking about the um perfect competition in the long run so we want to know how it moves from the short run to the long run. And remember, because the firm is the price taker, we need to make sure that we include the firm or the include the industry in this. So we can see here from our previous diagram about the firm being the price taker. So it is where demand and supply um equilibrium, where they um cross over, where they intersect, and that gives us our P1, Q1. OK, and as a result, then we remember that that determines the price um, that the firm will set. OK, so now that I have all my axes labelled. um, So what happens then? Well, because a perfect knowledge exists, remember we talked about those super normal profits. Well, what you see happening is more firms enter the industry because they want some of those super normal profits. And as a result, supply increases. And we remember from our supply and demand that that means that the supply curve shifts downwards. OK, to S1. So now as a result, you have a higher amount of quantity demanded because there is a much uh, higher quantity in the market. And as a result of this, it pushes down the price of the goods. OK. This leads to a higher quantity in the market. Okay, so um, higher quantity demanded and, and supplied. And as a result, then we see that our new demand curve is P2. So now we have our lower demand curve. Um, it's lower, not that there's lower demand, but it's actually lower because of the price, the overall price itself. So then if we go ahead, now guys, this is going to be sloppy, so I'm going to show you, I'm going to put the link up to the video for uh, the long run um, curve. So we're going to have AC, and that's just going to barely touch the uh, D is equal to AR is equal to MR graph. Then I'm going to draw my MC here. And now you can see, so profit maximization occurs where MC is equal to MR, this point here. And this is going to be my new quantity, my new equilibrium quantity. So just a brief description there from your notes. Due to perfect knowledge of prices and profit, no barriers to entry, more firms entered the PC market in the short run. This increases market supply, which causes the market price to fall. So this is what's happening here. Okay, remember that shift is out this way and that's increase in supply. And then finally, as firms are the price takers and more firms enter the markets, the prices will eventually fall to the point that AR is equal to AC. So we can see that here because our AC curve just skims that um, demand is equal to AR is equal to MR and SMPs are eroded to become normal profit. So you can see we've no gap here with SMPs written into it because we are now just making, or the firm is now just making normal profits. So this was the original price that they had in the short run and that's been driven right down to this price here. Okay, so got a lovely state exam um, graph here for you to use instead of my rubbish. Um, just note there that also to put in your C2 because now our cost is on that line. As opposed to previously, we had P1 and then C, uh, C1, okay. So now with the lovely state exam, but you know, not very colourful one, we see that we have no SMPs. So we start off with specs first. S, SMPs do not exist in the long run due to the entry of firms causing SMPs to erode normal profit. And it's important to note there as well, normal profit is where AC equals AR, okay. We said that in the uh, short run, 
uh, SM pieces where AR is greater than AC. So in this, AC is equal to AR. The next one then we have our P, which is price and output. Price and output is determined from the equilibrium. So this point here, A. So we can see that the firm sells at P2 and produces at Q2. Okay. Then we have um, E, which is the equilibrium. So the equilibrium occurs at point A that we can see here on my graph. Where MC is equal to MR, so there's the MR curve, there's the MC curve. And we can see that MC is rising. Always put that in there as well. This is your profit maximization point. That's another little line that you could put in there. And then we have C, which is our cost. So our cost now is determined where Q2, that should be Q2, Q2 touches AC. The cost of producing is at C2. Okay, so we can see here now that the cost of producing is just there. All right, so it's much, it's, it's almost along the same line as such, but now it equals the price. And then finally, this time around, we will talk about scarce resources. So S stands for scarce resources. The firm operates at the lowest point of AC. So you can see here, that's the lowest point of AC. Therefore, we say it's not re uh, wasteful of scarce resources. If they were operating up here, they could reduce their costs. We can see here, they could reduce their costs by simply producing more. If they were operating up here, they have higher costs and they could reduce those costs by producing less. All right. So here by them producing at the lowest point of the AC curve, they are the most efficient and not wasteful of resources. Finally, some advantages of perfect competition. Um, we'll always have low prices because the industry sets the price and there's plentiful supply. There's no waste of scarce resources in the long run. Just put that there in LR. There's definitely no waste of scarce resources. Um, there's no advertising needed as goods are homogenous, so they're all the same. Um, I'll explain that on the next slide. And then you can see here normal profits are earned in the long run means that consumers are not exploited. When we say the consumers are not exploited, it means that they're not playing, paying a ridiculously high price for a particular good because of, for example, monopoly. So when we talk about why firms and PC do, do not tend to engage in advertising, first of all, the product is homogenous. So the products are identical and really there is no difference. Now, I know every year I have students that say, Miss, organic produce and non-organic, yes, but they're kind of two separate markets as such. Um, increased costs. If they advertise, this would increase costs and it would decrease their profits. And as you can see in the long run, they can't afford to decrease their profit any further. Otherwise, they'll exit the industry and there'll be no additional revenue from this. So it really would be fruit fruitless. It benefits the entire industry. Advertising by a single firm would not just benefit the firm, but instead the entire industry. So if I was to advertise my potatoes, then the other farmers in my region, even though I would be trying to just advertise my own, because potatoes are a very generic pro product, I'd be just advertising potato, the potato industry itself. And that's why often you'll see that the government will actually advertise for those industries. So they pay for the advertising. For example, board beer ads, so the one about the beef and, you know, our beef is so fabulous because of the green grass and all the rain and so on. And the idea behind that is it, it promotes the entire industry.